Now, wrapped in sun yellow right here is the Mercedes-Benz CLA shooting brick. And today with us is one of our new hosts, Mr. Idris Talib. Are you ready for this, man? I am ready. Let's go. Let's drive this thing. This is the Mercedes-Benz CLA shooting brake 200 um, fitted with the whole AMG line thing. Wait, this is the AMG line, right? Yes, this is the AMG line. But it looks exactly the same like the CLA Coupe and the A-Class and the B-Class inside. Wait, 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 what do you mean by it looks exactly the same? I mean you have the 10.25 displays, the two 10.25 displays, okay. the aircon vents look the same. Everything is in the same place. It's not really much of a difference between the pretty much the whole compact class available from Mercedes-Benz as okay. of now. Okay. No, but you were saying the the whole AMG line thing is 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 different with the body kit and the interior, right? Yes, the interior. Well, you have the brushed aluminium as well as the white and black leather seats, but that really is pretty much it. So it's actually nothing much, huh? Yeah, it's just small visual differences. But it's still a very nice interior, let's be honest. 10.5. Yeah, yeah, it is, displays. it is. I think the screens are the screens are fantastic, man. It's yeah. larger than life. I mean, yeah. it's just it's something that just no one else has got in this class. Yes. For sure. What's the next competitor that you can think of that comes close to the CLA shooting brake? Well, in terms of wagons, I think the V60, the Volvo V60 comes close. That's quite stylish, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's quite nice actually. Yeah, that's yeah, very nice. I thought that was a very coherent uh, but the butt looks big. This yes. one, the car, the butt looks more smooth. I, I actually yes. think that the CLA shooting brake is actually one of the nicest in its class. Yes. For now at least. Yeah. And I think it's the only one in its class actually. There's no other wagon, premium wagon of its size. I think as of now, it's the only the only wagon. Oh. The V60 is a bigger car. Yeah, exactly. That was what I thought. I thought the V60 was actually a bigger car. Yeah, it is. Right? It is but there's bigger. nothing below the V60, right? There is nothing below the V60. I mean, if you consider the Seat Leon Sport Tourer as a competitor to this, which I... Yeah, but that's... that's uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, but I really have to tell you that I am quite in love with the whole 2 10.25 inch that yeah. you face right here. Yes, I, I mean, like it's, it too. I it's, mean, it's, it's larger than life, man. Shit. Yeah. Right, I mean, it's it's not vibrant when you come in. You come into the car, you're thinking that you'll yeah. see only one screen floating in the centre console like most car makers do. But no, when you come into the Mercedes-Benz CLA shooting brake, it's, you come in and you see like... Yeah, it is. Right? It makes the car look really expensive, really premium. <laughs> yeah, I, think no, yeah. I think nobody yeah. else is doing it like Mercedes when it comes to interiors. I think they're doing a very good job at it. It's very high tech. It feels, it feels very high tech. It feels that way at least. What do you want to do? Oh, look at that. <laughs> Um, I would like you to... Can you say that again, please? I would, I would like you to stop disturbing our filming process, if you may. <laughs> See, that's, that's the thing, right? Technology. Yeah, right, so, exactly. So exactly how it is. We were just talking about how nice and how good the whole what technology like is and do? stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, then, and it kind of just... Okay, I'm just... Okay. See, All right. a button solves that problem always. Wait, which button do you press again? I'll just press oh. home. Oh, okay. It works out. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's, that's technology for you. I personally prefer cars that are not so tech-savvy, mm -hmm. but unfortunately these days, I think because of competition, because of gimmick, yeah, technology yeah, yeah. is a must. Yes. Technology so, is a must. So we go back to the interior. The whole interior is really a visual treat, not just the screens. I mean, you look at the aircon vents, they have this lighting on it the ambient lighting and you change the temperature and then it changes colour. Oh yeah man, Shit, I just realised it. Oh, you never noticed this before? I didn't notice, I didn't notice yeah. it. Yeah, uh, it, I think across a few cars, I think the CLS did it first and now I think most of the... Also, oh, every time you adjust the temperature, it actually yeah. changes colour. So this car doesn't have dual zone climate control. If it does, then only the vents which you control Will change. Will change. The rest stays the same. Alright, man. It's really nice. That's I premium for you, man. Yeah, those kind of touches really, you know. You know that Mercedes isn't so serious when it comes to yeah. you know yeah. having a bit of fun. But I tell you what is I tell you what is something if I may digress. Yeah, the colour is not for me, man. We're, in a, <laughs> we're actually in a yellow car. Uh, yeah. Talk about serious and talk about having fun. I don't think I don't think they just keep it a duller colour. 
Yeah. For crying out loud. Yeah, the counter really shouts at you. It's like, I'm here! Yeah. I am here, everyone. I mean, people at bus stops are looking at us like, I know, right? no, what is this? I actually feel em- a bit embarrassed driving this car. It's like driving a Dragon Orange Audi Q8. That's yes, how embarrassing it actually can be. But I, I'm okay with the Dragon Orange Q8, to be honest. Just, just not this yellow. What, what, yes, what yellow. yellow is this called again? What this name is did Sun it? Yellow, by the way. Sun yellow. Sun yellow, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Uh, city, cap, city cap yellow might be... Uh... Yeah, uh, I don't know. Okay, but anyway, okay, so so we digress. Yes. Um, what I actually also really like about the fact, uh, about the cabin is the fact that the centre console is now clear. It's now very yeah. clean, it's very concise. But I think it, it comes at a bit of a price. The, the, the gear lever is now at the signal stop. Yes. So it takes a lot of getting used to. That I really don't yes. like. It, it really, right. it feels... It doesn't feel as intuitive as, as as it should be. But the good news is the AMG models, the true blue AMG models, still have the gear lever That's right here. That's right, which we all prefer. Yeah, yeah, it should be that way. But it does give you a very big space, though. You have more compartments to put your stuff. And yeah, there's a wireless yeah. charging port right here. Oh, USB-C oh th- there is? charging also, yeah. Okay, okay. So, I mean... It, opens up more space to do things and that's something you will get used to. You know what I can get used to? They should actually have a button for ventilated seats. I think I can get used to that. Yes. There's an option for ventilated seats though. Oh, oh, really? Yeah. How much? uh? I think it's what? $3,000, $4,000. Yeah, so that's... Yeah, that's... Speaking of buttons, the buttons here are, of course, they are glorious actually, it feels nice. Yeah. You know, it sounds it, nice. It, it actually even feels good on the steering wheel, all the all the function here. It actually feels very slick. Yeah. Yeah. And I like the sounds because it, all the sounds are the same, like the buttons from here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everything. Yeah. <laughs> but usability, of course, although how beautiful they are, is isn't really that great. For example, I mean, the main two things that you use in air conditioning is the temperature and the fan. Yeah. So you would assume that a similar looking button to control the temperature would control the fan, but it doesn't. It, it actually adjusts what fans you want, which is a bit... Oh, right, right, you know, right, 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 right. The actual right. fan speed is adjusted on the button, yeah. which... No, but is it because it's not dual zone? No, I don't think so, because if it's dual zone, then this, I think, changes into a also another temperature adjustment right, right, switch. Right, right, right. So, right. yeah. Okay, yeah, it's, it's a bit weird. It gets, it takes a bit of time to get used to. La. Yeah. Yeah, but it does feel good to the touch. La. It does feel good to the touch. It feels yes. very premium. It feels like a lot of thought has been put into this whole button haptic feel stuff. But, yes. But it, actually, it's not even haptic feel. La. I mean, it's just... It's not. It's just, it's just tactile. Yeah. It's nice, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but all in all, I think the whole combination, I think... They did a very good job with the whole car. So it's, it's not full on black. Like you see the door panels and stuff. Yeah. It's all leather, white leather. So it yes. kind of brings up the ambience. I mean, okay, we don't have sunroof in this car, but yep. at least it doesn't feel dark and it's yeah. still quite bright and still quite, you know, uh, uh, I would say slightly livelier. La. Yes. Even yes. if this car wasn't in sun yellow, it would have been <laughs> livelier. I mean, sitting inside here. Yes. Yeah. And I think that's the trade of the CLA shooting brake actually because if we come to the rear, you notice that you have a third quarter window that's not available in the CLA coupe or the A-Class or any of the rest oh, of the Oh, you mean behind range. the C-pillar? Or? Yeah, behind the C-pillar, the, the third quarter panel, oh, there's, okay. a, there's a small window there which helps with blind spot checking. Yeah, yeah. Even though it has like smaller windows and a sloping roof line, it's not very hard to look out of this car which I think is a big win for the CLA shooting brake. Okay, so we move to the rear seats now. Yeah. I know for you, Julian, rear seats, you know, and or rather space in general, it's not really an issue. Every car is an S-Class to me, lah. Yes. La, to be honest, I mean, I, I'll, I'll always have sufficient head and leg room. So yes. In fact, if you're driving... Perks of being short. Yeah, if, if he is driving, the rear seat behind him is really like S-Class size. But anyway, yeah, man. here, I know James had issues with the CLA Coupe. Yeah. Especially in terms of headroom. Headroom, right? Yes. Yeah, 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 here, yeah, yeah. This is significantly more. This is very close to the A-Class hatchback in terms of legroom. Oh, okay. Or rather, headroom, you, sorry. You don't really see it outside, right? I mean, it exactly. seems like you still have a sloping roof line sort of thing yeah, on the outside. So, still... on the inside, is actually more practical. Yes, it is. And okay. adding to that practicality, of course, is the bigger boot. We have, what, 500, 505 litres of boot space. Oh, the Coupe only had like, what, 460, 470? 460, 470 for the Coupe. And I think even lesser for the A-Class hatchback. Okay. So this 
has style and more practicality. Okay. So, and also the boot, I mean the berth is much bigger. You can put all your odd size items much easier. That's an improvement over the previous generation CLA class. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. No, but I think... Um, oh, wait. Previous generation CLA class or previous generation CLA shooting brick? Shooting brick. Right, right, mm, right. Okay, that's fair brick. enough. That's fair enough. That's yeah, fair enough. Shooting brick. And if you fold the seats back, it's 1,300 meters. Oh, that's like yeah. 1,370 to be exact, right? So that's 1, like close to 1,400 meters. That's like 1, 400, some IKEA yeah. moving standard sort of level. And, and not forgetting, we are actually talking about a premium compact class. Yes, this is smaller than a C-Class and it has that kind of boot More, space, okay. yeah, which is quite expensive. No, but I think that's the best part about driving a wagon. I mean, you feel like you're behind a wheel of a sedan. Like, while I'm driving yes. this, I don't really feel the heft behind. Yeah. I still feel like I'm driving a CLA Coupe, but yet I get the practicality of like, what, an SUV or what yeah. have you. It's just a lot of space. Yes. I think coming from, it's... I don't have a lot of stuff, to be, to be quite honest, mm. but a stroller and a a few barang barang behind actually takes up quite a fair bit of space. So I think yeah. a wagon would actually fit yeah. me quite well. Alright, so now that we're done talking about the car's cabin, what say we stop somewhere, get you behind the wheel, and then you tell us exactly how you feel about the car. Sounds good. Alright, man. Okay, man, so how does it feel behind the wheel of the car, man? It feels very nice. I mean, the steering wheel is nice and fat. It yeah. feels sporty, the flat bottom thing going on over here. And it gives you that kind of confidence you need if you want to drive this car quickly. Yeah, yeah, I kind of feel that way. I, I have to agree with you. I feel, I felt that way when I was behind the wheel as well. It gives you a lot of confidence, instills a lot of confidence. Um, but speaking of quickly, yeah, this car, 1.33 litre four-cylinder turbocharged engine. I do not know why 1.33, but it's a unique number for Mercedes-Benz. It takes um, 8.4 seconds from 0 to 100 kilometres per hour, all thanks to the 161 brake horsepower and 250 newton metres of torque from the engine. That's right. This engine is shared with the A-Class, the B-Class, the CLA, Coupe. Yes. It's the same engine. A very unique engine at that. I wonder 1. why is it not 1.4, just 1.3, 1.33. Yeah, it's going to be different, I yes, guess, Mercedes, you know. Yeah, 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 I guess, I guess. But i got to say this, Mercedes, this CLA shooting brake kind of has a boomier sound, don't you think? It does, it does, actually. Yeah, it's quite significant. I mean, it's significantly different from uh, the CLA Coupe or even the A-Class, so to speak. Uh, uh, but I'm not saying that it's different in a bad way. I think it's quite a nice sound, actually. It is. Boomier. It's nice. Yeah. It feels sporty. I think the one thing to note in the... This engine in the A-Class and as well as the CLA Coupe, it doesn't sound as uninspired past 3,000 RPM, yeah. but this with the exhaust... It sounds a lot better, right? It sounds so much yeah, better. It gives yeah. the car it so much makes character. It makes you want to keep going faster and faster all yes, the time. Yes, it does. But here's the thing, I, I have a small complaint about the car. Okay. Like on paper, you get like, you're supposed to get like 5.7 litres per 100 kilometres still fuel consumption. I think it's the way we have been driving and the way we have been manhandling the car and the way we're like in stop and go traffic. Mm -hmm. We're doing somewhat 11.1 litres. That's quite far off. Yeah, it is okay. kind of far off. But I think it is quite achievable. I think it's the way we have been driving the whole day. Yes, it is. And we've yeah. been in comfort all the way. We, I mean, I'm pretty sure if I put it into eco, yeah. we would be very close to that figure. Well, I guess, I guess. It's actually dropping now as you speak. Yeah, was, that's right. Yeah, it was 15 and then now it's 11, so... Yeah. So I guess, I guess it could go down closer to the suggested figures, but 5.7 is actually very good, but I don't think it'll get 5.7. Yeah, five point seven. <laughs> yeah, right. five point seven is a bit hard, especially in our start stop start stop traffic. I, I probably, right? I'll give you seven lah like, at best, the seven, and that's still mighty impressive for a car, a petrol driven car like this one. Yeah, that's right. So, like, come to the ride of this car. Yeah. This CLA shooting brake seems to ride a bit better than the CLA coupe. Yeah. And I think it's in the shape. I mean, it doesn't want to dive. It doesn't feel as And it doesn't crunchy. feel as stiff. Huh? Yeah. It, it's a lot more comfortable over bumps and ruts. It feels very well. Like, it really takes all this stuff in its stride. And yeah. Like, you see, you just went over that and it doesn't feel like... It doesn't feel broke back or anything. Yeah, it doesn't, like, you know, shatter through the cabin yeah. and all that. And it's what a Mercedes should be. Well, Is especially it? if you're going to buy it, it's a car for your family. I suppose exactly, that makes yeah. sense, right? Yeah. So, comfort is there. So... As what we do every week, we will decide whether or not we will buy, won't buy, or go try the car that we're testing. Mm. Um, do you have the answer? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Okay, as do I. As do Let's I. Do okay, this. so three, two, one. Will buy. buy. Will buy? 
Won't buy. Won't buy. Won't buy. Won't buy. <laughs> but we're very differing in opinions uh, right now. Yeah, <laughs> what, what the hell? Man? After all that we've talked about, I thought it will. Yeah. What, okay, why? Why? Enlighten us. Enlighten us. What's going on? Yeah, I, I mean, I mentioned a lot of good things about this car, but as of today, this costs a hundred and ninety-one thousand dollars. Which is a bit of money to me. Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. And fair you enough. know, I know it's stylish and it's a wagon yeah. and it's a combination of yeah. both. But yeah. I mean, the Volvo V60 is also stylish, and the Volvo V60, the T4 momentum is about hundred and seventy thousand dollars. Hundred and seventy-four, oh, if I remember. <laughs> and correctly. that's bigger actually. And that's that car bigger, is actually bigger. You know, more practical, more power. So I think that's what the T4 is. What one hundred eighty-seven plus horsepower. You tested the S60, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. Yeah. I did. I, did. I, I mean, did. it's fantastic car. Yeah, fantastic it's quick. Car. It's quick enough. You don't really need the T5. It's really quick enough, and it's much cheaper. And you know, practicality doesn't have to come with a price. Yeah, I guess. Okay. Well, you got, you got. You, I mean, you made a very good point there. But, but for me, I kind of think slightly differently. I okay. will buy this car for the fact that, okay, not only is it stylish, not only does it drive very, uh, not not only does it drive very well, it's very comfortable behind the wheel. It's very tax. It feels like a tax heavy. It feels like you're paying. I know it's hundred ninety one thousand, but it feels like you're getting every cent worth. Right, mm. you get this crazy larger than life screen in front of you yeah. meaty luxurious to the feel kind of steering all the all the buttons are all here what you need is all here very easy very straightforward and here's the thing that I why I'll buy it's a Mercedes Benz yeah so it's 191,000 not just for style practicality drivability it's also for the badge Yes. Right, which also means that resale value ain't gonna be much of a problem. Yes, I mean, imagine that's buying a Volvo, true. for example. I mean, that's very th th true. there yeah. will be people buy. I'm not saying that people are not gonna buy that kind of stuff, yeah. but I'm saying that probably a Mercedes Benz would attract them more. Yeah. Right. Pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah, for the young professional you know, looking into an entry what point. What can I do? No, no, no. <laughs> no, you cannot do anything for me. No. That, I don't know. That's still a will buy for you, even though you. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if they can actually get rid of that for me if I decide to buy this car. Like, yeah, I'm pretty sure you can dive through the menus and turn it off. Oh yeah, 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 I yeah. Mean, yeah, probably, probably, yeah. probably. So that's justified probably. then. Yeah, yeah. yeah CLA, I'll get it. I'll get it. CLA shooting yeah. break. Guys, so that's basically our review of the CLA Shooting Break 200. Um, please don't forget to like, subscribe and comment in the comment box below. And don't forget to press the bell notification so that you will be informed every time we upload new videos. <laughs> I don't know what okay. I say. This oh, usually, I don't know. okay. Usually, usually James will say, "Yep, till next time." Oh well, shit! Okay. I, I don't know. I, I don't know what I'm saying. Okay. So <laughs>